up on that Des Moines Model Railway. In this episode, we are going to be taking a look at my yard panel. And, well, not just taking a look at resurfacing the entire thing and remodeling certain aspects of it. So these tracks are moving, the bolts are moving. Hell, all of this has been relayed. This panel is one of my older ones. More rigid. Hasn't actually been touched since I made it. So now we are suffering from track misalignment on the traverser itself. It's obviously misaligned at the moment because I've un de declipped it. So, first task, save all the rails I can. Then, yeah, I'm lifting all the boards off. Which means removing all the little switches, the power outlets. Got three switches on this one in total. Gonna redo some of the wiring that I've got underneath. Once I'm at a certain point, because I'm taking this back down to its frame. So, let's get started. I think I'm going to start by removing as much of the stuff as I can.
Okay, so that's the panel now stripped back. Gone right down to the uh, bare bones of it. Even took that end piece off because I'm adapting where the end bit slides off. So I will be taking those bolts out and repositioning them, I think. This is the most major rework that I've had planned for the entire layout. So we can see the uh, runners that make the traverser possible. Gonna have to remount those. As <laughs> I was a bit inexperienced before. Um, also going to point out we've got these, which is our power box connections. So if they connect onto the power box on the floor, that's why they're all pegged up. Rarely use those ones now that panel one has the ability as well. Panel one tends to be in the easiest position to connect up to. Uh, we've got our isolation switch, which does from this bit onwards. Again, I need to redo some of the cabling on this panel. I haven't really been under it since I uh, initially built it. Over here, a bit where we had some copper tape holding bits on. That's broke, got to redo that. Got a surge protector from DCC Concepts. And then we've got the little circuit board that does the ADCC. And an extra switch which does our yard lighting. And those two little plugs there went to the uh, 12 volt outlets. All disconnected now. So now the job is just to put a new surface on, I guess, and then rewire everything up and set it all back up again. Right, so I'm assuming most people was assume expecting time lapse on how like we got to this stage. Unfortunately, due to the amount of times sections have to go in and out, it's actually taken us what several days just to get to this stage, and there's no way that I can get a fast enough time lapse or a clear enough shot on the entire panel to uh, show the amount of work that's gone into the layout in the past few days. <clears throat> trying to get all this work relatively into one video so just going to go over everything that has happened so I'm going to put the camera up and we'll go over so here we have our new traverser And you can see the new locks over there that we're going to be using. Can't go all the way home. Got a bunch of clamps sitting over there at the moment. And one sitting over there holding that bit in gluing. As you can see all the way through. So. The traverser is not unbolted to the runners underneath. We've got this new square metal bar. Which used to be part of a uh, TV clamp, so a uh, wall mount for a TV. Obviously, it had a cross beam on it and a couple extra bits that we just cut off and repainted. So, as you can see, it traverses the moves pretty smoothly. Gonna add some wax to the uh, bit where it rubs on here but I can effortlessly pull it out from anywhere on the front bar it's a little bit wider as well than the previous one by not much just where it overhangs the end of the uh, runners 
if we take a look underneath you can see how we've nut and bolted the uh, runners on this time around the uh, runners have now been straightened from the uh, last traverser as it wasn't that straight in the end got our end panel here still needs to be uh, glued in sorry screwed in and then we've got this panel over here that has been screwed in as well got a little hole there for wires to drop through as we're adding a new control panel here where we can turn lights on, switch the HDCC on and off and have our normal USB outlets we've also got to take these off of either side as the new position of that is 11 millimeters lower than the rest of the layout board Traverser wasn't as thick as it was last time, so we have to account for the differences. So I'll be doing that in a second with the camera rolling this time around. So that's where it's up to at this point. Um, when I get the new panel printed off, because I'm going to be 3D printing that one. So I'll be taking some measurements and getting that one off on the printer. Uh, all the wiring was removed from this panel as well. So we're starting completely from scratch. So yeah, should be good. We've also tested how many tracks we can get on. We had six sidings last time. This time we're going to be up to 10. So we get four extra siding tracks than we had before. We're also going to be relaying them straighter. So. Time to get to unscrewing. Right, so a bit more work has been done now. We've been planning out our tracks. Also got this join re-leveled and we've built the tracks across it and soldered those to screws. This bit is the only section on the layout that actually uses track pins just to hold that curve better. Then we've got more screws here before the uh, traverser. These are the uh, new latches that we're using. And then 3D printed receivers for them. The basic jig clamps. But they'll do the job that we need them to do on this and hold the uh, traverser in place. Spacing of the tracks is basically the width of a steel ruler. And that's just so we have enough clearance on this track. Before we risk hitting the side of the coach on there. Especially when it starts curving. So we don't really have any more space there to play with. We've also got the new panel control unit in. So here we've got our 5 volt USB sockets. We've also got our light switch. 
the power selector for this entire panel. So when it's up, we've got normal power, which is just straight DCC. And if we flick it down, we have the slightly reduced voltage on one rail, which will trigger trains like my free card DMU to do the shuttle system. And yeah, I got the message on that previous video, so I will be turning the unit around. And then on the end here, we've got the end section isolator, which is that other bit down the end there, which is just wood colored and not painted green yet. So, all of those switches have LED indicators as well. We've got three greens along the top to say when everything's powered on. And a little red one for the ADCC circuit. Obviously what we'll two little screws here. They come out. And we've got all the wiring on the back. So we've got our diode matrix there. So the main track power comes into the diode matrix and then splits black off to go onto the switch. We've got our yard track powers, the end isolation section. It's all been worked out just how it needs to go. We've got our yard panel lighting switch there. Control panel is 3D printed. And then we've just got two little long screws there that just feed into the holes. Where it's been slightly twisted, it holds itself perfectly. So if we move down here, move the tracks and stuff out of the way. Brings us down to another one of these clamps. And then we've got this end section. Which is now holding on the same way the rest of the layout does. So we've got bolts there and actually soldered, sorry, not soldered, wrapped around one of the screws are these cables. Which, quite simply, give me track power. And this is better than the old end section that we used to have because this one's not only lighter it's also a little bit wider so we've decided to ditch the old end section and coming with this new one we'll probably get three rails on here instead of just two so should be a lot better and a lot nicer than the other one. This uses these latches instead of the uh, screw bolts and nuts that we used to use before. Because it used to take about 5-10 minutes to put the old one on. This one you just put on, do the latches, you're done. You don't have to plug it in. You don't have to twist the button to fly nuts all the way to the end. So it is generally a lot faster now. Because this is what used to be securing the end panel. So we had uh, long bolts going through the end bit. Square nut on the end to secure it. And then we had the butterfly nut with the washer securing the uh, panel on the end. But... This has been redone so it can come further over, which means we get the first run of track straight away and we can have it straight along the entire panel. So the only curve we have to do is that little one over there. From this point, I should be able to continue with the time lapses and 
from this point it's mostly going to be track laying we've just got the uh, bolts and nuts to secure these things down as you can see they've already got the holes inset for the bolts so that's the sort of pattern we'll be going for we'll also be able to cut these rails and cut those rails and start getting it coming together as soon as all the tracks are down we'll be able to start with the wiring we're also going to get three sidings here maybe four though i might just keep it to three and these sidings are important because when we have engines we can't turn or we have to turn around using the turntable we'll have one of these cradles here so i've just got to notch some of that wall out so that i can sit right up against the end and we'll be able to run the train in pick this up turn it around and run the train back off again the right way around to put up the next uh consist so should be good operation of this yard should be a lot better than it has been in previous years so with that we'll continue the video and hopefully start with time lapses right so track laying has begun I'm going to start doing time lapse sections from this point so it's less of the uh, more complicated taking out and readjusting so we've got two lines fully in now that we can unlock and move each line lines up with corresponding tracks I'll swing the camera so you can see the lock and that goes back nice firm lock at the other end we've got two tracks laid up until the end where the buffers are you can probably only just see the buffers yep so at the end there needs to be a third line I know there's only two inbound lines but there's going to be a third in shunt where we can stick another engine just ticking over as we've got the space this time around so we're going to do that so this next length of track is going to be starting from this join going to the end but I've got to adapt it so it's got the notches there for our little plastic bits that we're using for the knot locks so a little 3d printed bit has a big circle with the little holes perfectly sized for the nuts they sit about there slightly spaced from the rail and that's what these things go into to precisely line them up every time there's another one at the opposite end you can see a couple coaches on the rails they've been testing my join spacing so that one then I've got a mark three here everything is so far going great so in the next little section we'll be prepping because it takes two sections to get to the end and we've got to put fish plates in the middle which are pre-wired ones because these are the uh, Pico Code 100 fish plates. We've also got some more Code 100 track just sitting up there on the wall. All fresh lengths. As I am starting this from basically scratch and I have a lot of stock pole track. So let's get the next length in. Uh, roll the coaches to the end. And then we can just start 
prepping the next length, two lengths to go in.
Right, so that's the track laid on this panel. We've got three extra lines here, which I'll just pan you down to, which are long enough to have this little cradle on them. So they're mostly just engine sidings. We can put this on when we've got engines that only have a coupling on one end. Roll an engine onto it. And then we can quite easily just flip it around. And use it to turn it around. That fits onto all three lines. Also, if you was wondering what um, the little black things were that I was putting between the rails, like that. Just a small thing I 3D printed to get the uh, spacing just right. Got two little lines that match up to the uh, in-between tracks section. Got... Made six of them, broke one, kept five. Pretty much. Now that the tracks are down, the next stages are to get the rest of these locks in for this to go down into. They're basically just a big circle that helps to lock it so it's lined up. I can see the tracks are lined up there. Pretty much every siding can line up to the exit roads and then obviously we've got the three exit roads at the other side which just gives that extra bit of uh, storage because this panel is all about storage. Thank you all for watching. This is going to be part one of a two-parter as I've just realised how much footage I have. And this panel is nowhere near set up. So, in the next episode, we'll be going over the wiring systems, as it's only partially wired at the moment. And I will be sorting out all the uh, finer bits. Still need to cover on that back wall before it goes off the end. So I still have to... Put a new bit in there, cut a portal for the trains to go through. Um, still got to get the rest of the locking mechanisms in. And generally finish off the wiring and add some actual lights to the layout. <laughs> as I have not done that yet. Also got a few things to adapt with the control panel because I can turn that on. I now get lights at the end, but my lights are obviously not working, so I need to tweak that a little bit, but I shall save that for the next video. As always, thank you for watching, feel free to subscribe and like the video, and I will catch you in the next one. If you have any questions about the panel, feel free to drop a comment. And I shall catch you in the next one.